It always starts the same. You follow the same routine every night. You prepare for bed, looking forward to the comfort of being enveloped by soft sheets, relief that you're able to relax and finally succumb to slumber. You clear your mind and silence fills your room, and soon your thoughts. Then there's that feeling. It's strange and difficult to describe, but it's gnawing at you. A nagging feeling that grows louder in your thoughts the longer you ignore it. A feeling that pesters you to acknowledge it as though it's forcing you to its will. Open your eyes, that feeling shouts at you. Involuntarily, it feels like a natural reaction. Irrational it seems, but it's the same feeling you have right before you catch someone intensely staring at you in public. As you lie in your bed, that feeling is building. It can last several seconds, but feels like several minutes. You finally flash your eyes open. Your room nearly pitch black, your eyes dilate, trying to focus on the darkness. What is it that's causing you to have this strange feeling? And that's when you see it. A dark, tall shadow, a human silhouette. It stands before you, filling your entire being with paralyzing fear, dread, and confusion. It has been watching you this entire time. Shadow people. This is what they're called. Shadow people exist throughout numerous religions and cultures. They're one of the most reported paranormal sightings. They are believed to be shadowy supernatural entities that present themselves at night, usually as a person is about to go to sleep. While their appearance is largely the same with each encounter, a shadowy humanoid form or shadowy black mass, it's whether or not they are harmful that has varied within these encounters. Various reports of shadow people have been described as creepy, terrifying, and giving off a feeling of malicious and evil intent. Some have reported them to be fleeting experiences akin to briefly seeing a ghost, and some others have encountered these shadow entities as being helpful to them in some form, leading them to believe that they may serve a purpose of guiding them or watching over them in their life. There is also a belief that these shadow people could be spirits of people that refuse to move on to the next spiritual plane, or that they're interdimensional beings or time travelers of some form that are either visiting or passing through our realm. There are four different types of shadow entities that have been widely reported. Shadow people are the most common, a black mass of opaque shadow in human form. They stand still or move slowly, and may disappear when trying to confront it or shining a light upon it. Then there's creepers, which are also a black mass in human form, but they crawl across the floor, walls, and ceilings, either quickly or slowly. There's also a dark mass, which is the form of shadow entity without any discernible form, and it presents itself in various sizes and tends to move slowly. And lastly, there's dark mist, which is the only shadow mass allowing some light to pass through it, but it moves in a deliberate way. So scientific explanation rationalizes shadow people as being a mere psychological occurrence. Sleep paralysis is a common explanation. It is the state during which you are just awaking or just falling asleep, allowing you to be aware but unable to move or speak. This state allows for an episode of hallucinations, which can be quite vivid causing you to hear, feel, and see things that are not there. Sleep paralysis can be a single episode or recurring and can happen in anyone. The causes of sleep paralysis are varied and can stem from unordinary triggers like sleep deprivation, abnormal sleep patterns, and even stress. It is believed to be a dysfunction of an underlying mechanism in the REM sleep cycle, which is a phase of sleep that occurs at intervals during the night and is characterized by rapid eye movements, vivid dreaming, bodily movement, and faster pulse and breathing. The night is certainly an appropriate time for shadow people to appear. Fear of darkness is quite commonplace, so when the night plays tricks on our eyes, warping ordinary objects to monsters and demons, it's normal to assume these shadows are simply created in our minds. And science certainly has its explanation for these immense feelings of fear and paralyzation. But, what of those that have encountered shadow people and they were not paralyzed? In fact, they were able to move, even speak, and could not only see the shadow, but could also physically feel it. Well, this is what happened to me.
Years ago, when I was around 11 or 12, my family and I lived in an old Victorian house in a fairly rural area. The house had four floors with sealed small doors in the attic. A small door covering a chute in my room which dropped down quite far but it didn't have an exit. The house also had pulley systems meant for transporting food from the kitchen to the second floor and even a chute meant for coal to heat the house that led to the basement. But the exit to the basement was blocked off by a wall as it was no longer needed due to the modernized changes made to the home. So the house was quite old and already quite strange and creepy. And in this house, my family and I, and even our cat, experienced many terrifying paranormal events, which eventually caused us to leave the home. But that is quite a very long story for another time. Nevertheless, one of the earliest paranormal experiences I had there was an encounter with shadow people. It happened one night during winter, and would happen repeatedly after, becoming gradually more menacing. I was getting ready for bed. I have never been able to sleep with any type of artificial light. It has to be pitch black in order for me to sleep soundly. I was lying in bed in a dark room with the only faint light being moonlight from my window. I was sleeping comfortably with the covers over my head. And it happens. That feeling, that nagging feeling, it makes me feel like I have to pull the covers down and look, but at what? Why do I have that feeling like someone or something is there? And I pull down my covers and I look. And standing before me is a shadow figure. Slightly blobbish, not sharply defined, but humanoid in form. I stare at it. My first thought being, I just turned off the lights moments ago, so it must be my eyes trying to adjust to the night. I close my eyes and open them again. It's still there. A dark shadow and I can't see through it. I stare at it again, fixating my eyes on it, on its shape, waiting for a change. It must be my eyes, I thought. It's normal to see black patches as your eyes adjust to the dark. So I look away from it, looking for dark patches or shapes on the other parts of my room, the wall, the ceiling, just trying to prove to myself that it's just my eyes, but nothing. The only shadow that lingers is the figure by my bedside. I close my eyes tighter and for longer, open them, and it persists. It doesn't change shape, distance, nor darkness. I was not scared and I wasn't paralyzed. I was just trying to reason what stood before me. You see, at this age, I had prior experiences of paranormal entities, but they were far more terrifying. But none of those experiences dealt with an entity that was just a dark figure that stood still, didn't move, react, or try to provoke me in any way. So in my mind, I didn't initially think it was something paranormal. I turned over, facing the wall with my back towards it, something I would not do now, covered my head with the sheets again, and eventually fell asleep. I didn't think much about it the next day. Then that night, it was time to go to bed, and that evening, it happened again. The same form, standing before me, and yet I didn't think to fear it. Instead, I assumed, well, it looks exactly the same, in the same area again, right by my bedside, so it must be my eyes. So I ignored it, turned around again, and went to sleep. The next night, again, it continued. It was only when I saw the figure one night, and it was far greater in size, much taller than it had been the nights prior. I pulled the covers down over my head and whispered my prayers to myself. I was fearful, but also confused. I just kept thinking, is this actually real? The following night, I went to my mom, right before bedtime. My mom and I always had a close relationship, so I could tell her anything. But for some reason, I didn't tell her right away. I was still doubting myself that what I was seeing was even real. So instead, I asked her to come to my room and asked if she could feel anything. Kind of like when kids ask their parents to check for monsters under their bed. My mom was also extremely sensitive to paranormal presences, but surprisingly she said no, that she didn't feel anything. I thought, well, she can always detect something, so it must not be anything then. Thinking back to this moment, I realized she may never have felt anything because it wasn't there at that moment, or at least it didn't allow itself to be detected. But like clockwork, I saw it again that night. And when I did, I wrapped the covers over my head and anxiously said my prayers. I hesitated, slowly looking over my covers, but it wasn't there. 
which left me torn between thinking, was it my prayers or did my eyes finally adjust? And am I just being silly thinking there's something there and it's been my eyes the whole time? A few nights of seeing this figure, I asked my mom again, do you feel anything? And she asked me, what's going on? I reassured her it was nothing and I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything in my room. For whatever reason, I kept doubting myself as this was unlike anything I had ever experienced. Then one night, when I saw it again, it appeared the same by my bedside and still large in size as it had been the few nights before. But this night was different because its presence gave me a startling sensation I hadn't felt the nights prior. Fear. And not merely fear from its presence or growth in size. It was the type of fear that I can only imagine prey feel when caught by predators. I had this overwhelming negative feeling from it like it was going to harm me, but I was not paralyzed. I yanked the sheets over my head and proceeded to say my prayers, but I hesitated as I found myself forgetting the lines of the prayers. It was so odd, I suddenly couldn't think straight, I couldn't focus, I couldn't even recall my prayers I had known for several years. And the more I tried to say my prayers, the more lines I'd forget. I couldn't proceed further. I stopped out of frustration and just angrily said out loud, if you didn't come from God, go back to where you came from. And again, I tried to say my prayers and eventually I was able to. I looked out over my covers and it wasn't there. Several days had passed and I didn't see it again. Then one night, as I was sleeping, I awoke to the feeling of warmth, an intense amount of warmth by my bedside, the side of my bed that met the wall. Although it caused me to awake, it didn't hurt me and I actually found it comforting. I even moved closer to it and laid my head against the warmth, slowly opening my eyes and in the corner of my bed where it met the wall, there was a black mass of shadow and it wasn't like what I saw before. It was on the opposite side of the bed and not in a humanoid form. My eyes were so heavy from sleep, but seeing this widened them in fear. I stared at it, moving my hand toward the warmth, acknowledging that what I was experiencing was real. And I jolted up and switched the lights on, but nothing was there. And I wasn't paralyzed, I was awake, and I know what I saw and what I felt. I prayed and waited a while but sleep began to take me again. So I kept the light on and the light back down to fall asleep. In the midst of falling asleep, as I began to drift off, I remember feeling that sensation of heat again, but I felt unusually tired and found it difficult to stay awake. When I woke up the next morning, I realized my lights weren't on. And this is when I finally just told my mom and she did her spiritual cleansing to the room, and after that, I never saw it again. But unfortunately, far more terrifying events would happen thereafter. This experience has always made me wonder if it was merely something from the house, or something that has been following me for a long time. And the reason I question this is because my mother told me about an experience of shadow people she had when I was an infant. When I was a baby, my mother's cat Amy grew extremely attached to me and was very protective of me, even lying on the floor in front of my crib or inside of the crib as though to guard me. Sometimes when my mom came to wake me, Amy would even prevent her from picking me up and taking me out of my bed. It was one night when my mother saw a dark human shadow swiftly walk into my baby room. She quickly reacted, rushing down the hallway to my room and there she saw Amy inside of the crib, face towards the shadow, hissing and growling at it. My mom angrily confronted it, turning the light on, reciting prayers. She also did her spiritual cleaning after removing me and Amy from the room. My mom always had to ensure it was constantly protected as that wasn't the last time paranormal incidents would occur involving me as a child. But she didn't see that shadow entity around my crib again. Well, have you guys ever seen shadow people? Please tell me in the comments. And if you like my content, thank you and I appreciate it so much. And please feel free to subscribe and like. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe everyone.